I'm your host, Team Mitchell Bell, and we have Brad Yoder here in the studio. Hey, Brad, how you doing? I'm doing well, Team Thank, Mitchell. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for, you can call me Mitch. I okay, mean, yeah. all right. All right. Uh, I've known Brad for a long time, and uh, I'm really pleased to have him here on the show uh, and playing some songs, and I just find out I'm actually going to get to sing with him, too. So. We're going to make you sing, Mitch. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a pity it's, to waste the golden pipes. Uh, oh, man, I don't know about that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, normally... What I, I ask people to do is kind of like shake off the nerves, get everything, you know, just like dig into a tune and just oh, yeah. play something off of the top. Uh, and uh, in case you just joined us, you know, you're listening to Acoustic Songs Live at 91.7 FM and streaming live at WNJR.org. What are you going to do for us, Brad? I'm going to do a song that I wrote in January called Jury Duty. I was called downtown to uh, be a potential juror. I was not chosen for a jury. Um, I did mention that uh, I thought punishing people didn't usually make them better, and that sometimes not all laws were just. That did it. That did it pretty much, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's, I'll remember that if I'm ever... <laughs> <laughs> you might mention, I mentioned higher laws. Sometimes there are higher laws than, than you know. Yes. Yeah. So there we go. <laughs> so, and of course, you know, being... That guy, I had to write a song about it. Okay, this is Jury Duty by Brad Yoder. I took a bus all the way downtown Where a hundred of us sat around I waited till they called my name they ask if I could fix the plane But I know I'll be judged the way that I judge But that's not usually pretty Cause the measure that I choose is the one that they'll use When they face me for jury duty Jury duty So raise your hand if you recognize the defendants in their Sunday ties As they try to shake the sins of youth While the lawyers tug a war the truth But we know we'll be judged the way that we judge And that's not gonna be pretty Cause the measure that we choose Is the one that they'll use When they face us for jury duty Once I found the mercy sweet threw myself at her feet And when I asked, am I cursed? She laughed, you're not the first, you're not the first Take the worst thing you've ever done Make that moment your defining would get off scot-free I tell you now it sure as heck ain't me Cause I know I'll be judged the way that I judge And that can't hardly be pretty Cause the measure that I choose is the one that they'll use When they face me for jury duty We all know we'll be judged the way that we judge I need you to remind me that the Four songs for 2011, which is a pretty good start, and that's the first of them. But I, I had a radio moment. Moment. I'm like, oh, because I, so I sang heck. I wasn't sure what I could say or not. So yeah, you can say that. I could have said that. All right then. And and actually, I think that there was a Supreme Court ruling that um, free speech basically allows all the other words too. Oh, okay, that, I'll try to use them as well. 
Uh, <laughs> no, no, actually, the radios are kind of self-policing. Yeah, right? okay, yeah. everything. They're, they're still kind of, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know. Good to all, know. Yeah, there's all sat satellite radio. I mean, Howard Stern went there because he could not. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's good to know, though. But heck, yeah, you can get away with that. Okay. So, how the heck are you? Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. I'm good, you know. I'm, um, my definition of success is to still be doing uh, what I love to do. So, I play lots of random musical things, um, emphasis on the randomness. And I'm still writing songs. I have a new CD, which I really like. Um, I'm very proud of. And I also work, uh, you know, my part-time job, doing, coordinating a tutoring program after school, and that's fun. So it's, uh, I'm fortunate to be a uh, creative person whose quote-unquote straight job happens to be uh, very uh, both enjoyable and satisfying. So that's cool. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I've known you for a long time, but I really, I guess. Uh, haven't had that discussion. You know, what? What's your day job? Right? Yeah, like, right. Yeah. Yeah, um, but you, you're you're a counselor, right? That's no, um, I'm. I, I, uh, I mean, I do a couple things. I, I give some guitar lessons, and I oh, okay. actually gave a German lesson um, recently. But uh, <laughs> um, but I, I I coordinate a program where people volunteer in Pittsburgh, and they uh, each volunteer agrees to help a kid once a week for an hour uh, with homework and reading and math and that kind of thing. Okay. So I, I organize that and match people up and um, occasionally I jump in and also tutor. But most of what I do is keep things running, you know, keep the chaos uh, rolling along. Is that through the uh, East Liberty Presbyterian Church? It's at the East Liberty Presbyterian Church, but it's a program of East End Cooperative Ministry, which you can find oh. online at eecm.org. So, yeah. Cool, cool. That's about a one-third time job, and then I live cheap and play music. So I remember uh, picking up your CD used that yeah. was a long time ago, and there was a song on there that I still remember to this day about your car. Um, oh, used. I mean, the song used to start yeah, yeah, the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. About the whole car thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to keep my Subaru alive. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we both have one. And, uh, I've, Mine's paid for now as of a couple months ago, so, you know, I've got to drive it, hoping to drive it for a while because it's, you know, like suddenly I have one fewer payment every month, which is awesome. And they're great for singer songwriter travel travel mobiles. Definitely know. great for schlepping instruments and other people and um, they're good at bad weather. I had done too many shows where I was, you know, driving through heavy rain or snow and making fifty dollars and I felt like I was kind of risking my life to make fifty dollars playing music somewhere and I thought, okay, I'm gonna get all wheel drive and I'll just feel a little bit better about the situation. <laughs> they're, they're awesome, but so you, I mean, really, uh, I've known you since 95. We did a thing on WYP together. We did it. We did. You, me, and Brooke Smokelin. Yeah. <laughs> back. And uh, the host. Um, Greg what? Midas. Greg Midas. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it was a singer-songwriter circle. And uh, I remember, you know, we were all talking about releasing CDs, and I think you actually were the one that got one out there. In uh, 97, I got one out, my first one out. Yeah. took me uh, 13 years yeah. to actually do it. Uh -huh. I, I really procrastinated. Oh, really? Uh, but, uh, you're, you're, you took your time. You know, you wanted to get it right. <laughs> yeah, but, but the, uh, the, you, you um, have, I, I like to say you're like the hardest working singer-songwriter in Pittsburgh when I think of you in terms of you're like always playing somewhere everywhere you've played just about every coffee house there is to play at. I have played a lot I mean I, I feel like I've actually been less hardworking in the last while but this reputation lingers so I, I try to not you know when people are like you're just always playing everywhere I'm like yes let's stick with that that's the official story milk it <laughs> <laughs> yes I'm ubiquitous um, yeah they actually uh, I'm, I'm the featured free download. If you go to the Pittsburgh City Paper uh, website you can and find the Monday download, you can download uh, um, my song called Again, which is from my new CD, Excellent Trouble, available at bradyoder.com and a few other places. 
And, uh, yeah, I think I'm described as the uh, something friendly, ubiquitous Pittsburgh folk singer, something like that, yeah. So I, I try to, you know, be several places at once if I can. And, uh, and you're involved with Acoustic Cafe. I know. Um, uh, yeah, I go, um, in, in, uh, that I hit the Monday Night Open Mic um, a lot, which is a great gathering of musicians and there's lots of fun collaboration and you get to hear good writing and good playing. Um, and I, I host that usually once every couple months, every two or three months I am the host. But it's, it's also, I take my saxophone down there and it's a chance to uh, uh, to play some sax with people and get my sax. Could you just get my you sax on? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was wondering if that was coming. Yeah. <laughs> So, so the tel uh, the new CD. It, it, while well, you had just you re released it here locally, um, local release end of last year, mm -hmm. and now you're going to release it nationally. Is that the plan here? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> well, tell, tell everybody about it. Um, well, you know, this is a record that I've spent about three and a half years working on. Um, so it's not thirteen and a half, but you know, plenty, <laughs> plenty long, and it just kind of got out of control. You know, I just I uh, kept tweaking things and adding things, and, um, but ultimately, you know, it turned out sounding the way I wanted it to sound, which, uh, which is great, and, um, yeah, it's really lovely, you know, it's, uh, it's large and detailed and dark, and has strings and, you know, lots of little stuff going on, um, and it's kind of a, it's a pretty grown-up record in a way, I mean, it's, it's got couple songs about divorce and some songs about mental illness and um, so it's think a thinking person yeah it's, it's, for it's, sure. it's yeah it's it's uh, so um, and I think uh, what I realized since you know since completing it is that I managed to create something that's you know kind of straddles it, there it's folk influence but it's not really folk enough to be played a lot on folk radio and it's not you know it's got Americana touches and you know, some banjo, mando, dobro, but it's not really an Americana record. So it kind of straddles things genre-wise, which is probably uh, you know, not real strategic of me, but at the same time, it's the kind of music that I find interesting. Yeah. It's music that, that combines rock elements with other, you know, other things. Yeah. Folky things. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I understand exactly what you're saying, because it's hard to pin down... Uh, one particular genre and some of the stuff I've done, and but it, you know, ultimately when you're putting something like that together, you have to decide when you're picking out tracks. That's the hard part, I think, to mm -hmm. put it to put a CD together. I had a hard time doing that because I had so much of a catalog that I never re recorded, and the um, I just that ultimately just you really just have to make it for yourself. And, and yeah, you have to you have to be uh, happy with it, and that's, so yeah. I'm really happy with this one. I should mention, too, that if you go to bradyoder.com or if you go to bradyoder.bandcamp.com, either of those places you could stream it and listen to the whole record. Um, cool. And probably if you're technologically savvy, you could steal it, too, but um, you can definitely stream it. You gonna play something? I thought maybe songs? I should play the title track since we're talking about this record, and... Uh, okay. Excellent trouble Excellent trouble Hey you Let's find some excellent trouble I think it's high time We rose from this rubble We too should become partners in crime Turn on a dime Leave them all guessing tonight Let's earn a bad reputation And fight to shake up this sad situation We might inspire the next generation Keep asking why To never say die Excellent trouble Therefore the making Will burst a few bubbles Right therefore the breaking A loose 
coalition of lovers and skeptics Poets and vagabonds, beggars and mystics Excellent trouble, only the finest Will color fluorescently outside the lines So when tower faced they ask us why we can't stop smiling just cause it's all so unbearably beautiful Excellent trouble Hey you, have you been searching for courage all through dresses? Boxes in storage unsure Where you left what you are made of Among letters and yearbooks And sweaters and such What if everything we have discarded Is just ballast we chop as we gradually live up out of gravity sway, birds don't obey. Why hesitate when there's excellent trouble? Therefore, the making will burst a few bubbles. There, therefore, the breaking a loose coalition of lovers and skeptics. And heretics, poets and mystics, excellent trouble. Only the finest will color fluorescently outside the lines. So when tower faced, they ask us why we can't stop crying. It's just cause it's all so unspeakably. Beautiful. My only wish is to honor this gift, to practice my part and the jaywalker's art. So when tower faced, they ask us why we can't stop smiling. It's just cause you're all so unbearably beautiful. Some strange algorithm is the one that kind of sticks out that I've, I've uh, you know, uh, retained. You know? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Do you have a copy? We'll have to give you a copy. I'll, 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 yeah, I've listened to it when I think if you first put it up on Bandcamp, I listened to all those songs, but mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't I didn't get a chance to put for the. Um, but I have a copy of used. So I've listened to that one. There's the one in between, too. So. I, yeah, I think I have a copy of that one, too. I have to. You know, so someday or never. We yeah, and I was just you know I'm looking over. I really like uh, what you have done with giving people the background on how you put this stuff together. Because uh, um, like I'm looking at used, and and that was uh, quite an investment. In, in, in they they've each in, been kind of investments in their own ways. Yeah, time, time and money wise. Um, and 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 then I I I was looking over at someday or never. This is. This blows me away. I knew this about you were, had done something with Mitch Easter, and uh, he had mixed the you, record. Yeah, right? Mitch, no, not the whole record. Mitch Meast mixed one song actually on this record, on the new one, and one oh. song on the last one. Well, here's the okay. Now you and I have played on the radio together, but here's the freaky part. Yeah. The producer that I worked with in Nashville. Yeah. 
He interned under Mitch Easter down in North Carolina. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's from the same hometown. Kernersville. And he got out of college, uh -huh. and how he interned was he wa he went up to his house, and he knocked on the door, Yeah. and he said, luckily he wasn't home, because his car broke down in his driveway. <laughs> <laughs> but he ended up working with him, and he yeah, did all the, great. all the tape stuff and everything. Yeah. And, uh, you know... Just thought I'd throw that in. That's, That's pretty, cool. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, yeah, well, basically on, on both the last two records, you know, I did the mixing all with uh, with a Pittsburgh person, different two different people, Pittsburgh people actually. Um, Someday or never was Peter Beckerman, who's amazing, and uh, the new one was with Lurch, who's a Canadian expat uh, yeah. from of Toronto, and then he was in Brooklyn. And, been in Pittsburgh for a while. His real name's Lurch? No, no that's, but that's, his, name. that's his professional working name. <laughs> and uh, so, and in both cases, you know, I, I really loved how they mixed those albums. And there was just one song that I was like, oh, I just, you know, I feel like the song could be a little different. I, you know, I kind of, you know, you mix the whole thing and then that, I had this one song. And in both cases, um, those guys didn't really have time to go back and do that. And so I drove down to North Carolina and, and you know, in each case, Mitch mixed one song for me, um, which, is, which was fun, you know, and he's a, he's a cool guy to hang out with and gave me a great deal. And he's got, you know, ridiculous amounts of random recording gear and stuff, you know, like the on the tune he mixed for this one. The, after we're done, he's like, hey, you know, the reverbs are all uh, spring reverbs. He has these, you know, studio quality, enormous spring reverb units. So, yeah. Yeah, the, um, the, that's... Uh, Josh worked with him, and, and they're, you know, Tape Bob Magazine is like their thing. They're, they're like, oh, yeah. Oh, they're all, they're into that analog, yeah. all that analog stuff. And, uh, yeah. Totally. Uh, and uh, th that's cool. That's, that's a really cool uh, cool thing to be into. I, of course, you know, I have a little recording studio in my home. You, mm -hmm. you do too, right? So, I do, yeah. So, so the, as time has gone by, um, with like, You've seen just over the last fifteen years the changes that have happened and oh, yeah. like the internet uh, recording everything that's happened it's so much uh, easier to do a DIY deal. It is. It is. I mean, you know, the tools are available to get great results. Um, you know, you still kind of need some know-how and some ears and all that stuff. But it's it's very uh, there's a democratization of the process, um, which results in tons of output, which is, you know, a challenge, a challenge to, to make something that stands out and then all that music, but um, it's great that, you know, people have access to recording their own music and, and doing it in cool ways, so. Yeah, uh, you could probably be a full-time consultant on that. Maybe, I don't know. know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean to, to be fair, like the last two albums, they were recorded at my house, I pretty much had Peter or Lurch there most of the time. Um, I did a couple of things like some harmony vocals and things I recorded, you know, by myself. Uh, but uh, much of most of it, I had somebody there turning knobs and who knew how to get good sounds and make sure the sounds we kept were, were as good as they could be. So I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't feel like a you know qualified to be an engineer, but oh, okay. maybe uh, a, maybe a producer or something. You know? Yeah, yeah. It it it. But I mean, as far as. Um not it just doesn't stop there once the recording's done. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, how do you make something work for you? And I and honestly, uh, I I'm still trying to figure that out. But uh, um, you know, it's again, there's there's so many different ways to measure success. I think this is true in whatever you do, and I believe that each of us, you know, we owe it to ourselves to find a way to measure our own success. Um, because it makes us happy, and which does not mean, you know, we should slack or not be uh, self-critical. It just means that um, we're on a real specific journey, and we're trying to get better at what we do, and, um, you know, the, the biggest measure of success for me is just to be able to continue to do it, uh, that I'm still, you know, I wrote that Jury Duty song, a couple months ago, and I think that's as good a song as, as a, you know, as I was writing 15 years ago, and better. So, um, you know, on the, I'm in a position where, on the one hand, I could say, why am I not as well known as, uh, you know, person X 
Oh, well. But, you know, like, what yeah. would be the point of that? Because I know uh, a ton of really talented, gifted people who are probably slightly less known than me. So, you yeah. know, like, who am I to complain? But the fact that I still get to play music for a large portion of my living, I think, is, uh, yeah. is great and a real gift, so... Yeah, that's a trap, though, if you, if you start doing that and preparing yourself. It, it, it is well. a trap, and not just in music, but certainly especially in music. Yeah. My, uh, well, a, a friend of ours, uh, Eric Griebling, we had talked oh, about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Eric, uh, I had said something, to, asked him a question one time about being successful, you know, um, in music. And I think a lot of artists that come out, they think that, well, being successful is that, you know, you have to get a sell or something or yeah, you, everybody you know. knows who you are and yeah and and Eric said something I thought was it's like well how many people live in the city of Pittsburgh you know uh, in the metro area two million and if you're like one of the most uh, well-known bands playing and you know it's it's all relative you know yeah. it's 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 a relative thing that uh, how do you measure your success um, you know yeah uh, and, and, it's, and that's ultimately a personal choice so um, you know I think I want to make a choice to to uh, see what's good about. I mean, you know, if you think about it, we all got up this morning and uh, you know, like a tsunami didn't come and wipe out our city. Yeah. So, like, you know, yeah, we, we really got it good. And uh, yeah, I did. I did once get out of a parking ticket for being Brad Yoder, so that was you know. That's cool. I know uh, a speeding ticket. A speeding ticket. I That's know. even better. Yeah. A parking ticket. I mean, I could. Yeah, probably get. <laughs> yeah, but a speeding ticket, man. Uh, yeah, speeding ticket. It would have been an expensive one too. I was lucky though. We had a young uh, group on here, and the one cello player said something that stuck in my mind. She said, "Music is its own reward." It is. Well, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, "Wow." Yeah, you know, that, that's it. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of that, you want to play something else? I do. For us? I'm going to make you sing. Oh, is this? Key Mitchell Bell. Okay. Yeah. So I, 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 I tell you the story of the song, which is. There's this guy, Tim, who does a thing called Song Bomb, where he writes a song every day in the month of February. And each day, a different songwriter um, writes a song with him, not as a co-write, but in parallel. So, so he picks a bunch of, like, actually really great songwriters. Um, uh, and he had people like Vance Gilbert. And, anyway... And each day they decide, okay, today we're going to write a song about this, and you know that other person writes something, and, and he writes something, and so it's a way for him to write 28 or 29 songs um, in a month and see what he gets. So he invited me to do it this year, and I was fortunate in that my day was the Monday after I was at Folk Alliance in Memphis, so I had a 12-hour drive from Nashville to Pittsburgh in which to write this song, and I had. I said, let's do this. I'll send you some phrases that I think are kind of interesting. And you could pick one and write, use it to write or, you know, use it as a starting place. And you send me some phrases and I'll, like, look at your list of phrases. Because that's a lot of a lot of how I write. It's like, I hear something and I think, oh, that sounds like, you know, a song idea. And I write it down. And so I, his list of phrases included uh, um, None the Wiser, which I thought was pretty cool, and also A Matter of Time. And so I ended up writing a song called Matter of Time. Uh, and you're going to sing with me on it. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I can remember the melody, but I think yeah. I'll pick it out. It's, it's just, you're just going to go, I'm going to go, it's just a matter of time. And you're going to go, matter of time. Gotcha. And you out there in Radio Land, you can sing along as well. Matter of time. I know you're excited about that. It's a matter of time, matter of time. 
So two lovers take their vows And they find out what they've got themselves into And in a matter of time, a matter of time Their kids will all go off to school Where the notes they pass will start that dance anew by every cookie fortune that I read. Change is the only constant, whether we like it or not. And if you don't like it, close your eyes and count to three. Cause in a matter of time, a matter of time, they'll spread our ashes on the Maybe then we'll settle down and take things loose. It's just a matter of time, a matter of time, until our children have to deal with a world still trying to heal from our abuse. I was just looking at the top. I, I said, that's not on one of these CDs. No, no, no. That was that was February 20-something, the Monday. might have been the last Monday in February or the second to last month. might have been the 21st. You're already, you, I mean, you're on your way now. It's like the next CD is already. Well, it's written, yeah. It's I just, written. yeah, you know. So um, we got to, how to pay for it is another question. But we'll get there. We'll get there. That's, that's the uh, crazy part is that um, you're playing songs that are new now, mm -hmm. but you have this CD that's coming out that you've been working on for for a, a while. Years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, so, it's out. It's so, yes, it's more out than not out. So, so <laughs> you're you're playing this stuff, but you have new stuff, and uh, I found that it's like you're in this cycle of of like, hey, um, I'm promoting this, but I'm already in this other place, and, yeah, and it's yeah. it's kind of a a strange uh, thing. Um, it the, is, it is, and I still play songs. Um, that I wrote, you know, in 1991. And there's a when you and I played on the radio in '95, Skylar, uh, Skylar, and we could we could do that one actually. That might be a, that's sort of my greatest hit. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, at this point I have coming up on 20 years of songs to to uh, play, which is great. Um, you know, certainly lots of them don't get played, but uh, I, t I I play some things from you know most of those. Most of those times in my life. I have to ask you this: like, when you play them, do sometimes do you like get confused? With, like, yes. That? Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, oh wait a minute, that bridge is from the other yeah. part. It's like, I'm like, oh no, I'm doing the. <laughs> yeah. Well, and not, not with Skyler because I've played that steadily over the years. But if I try to pull out something um, that you know maybe I used to play a bunch but haven't played in a while, um, occasionally I get those deer in the headlight moments where you think, uh, what comes next? What's the next? How does the next verse start? Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't happen a lot, but where it will happen is if somebody shows up and heard me for a while and they want to hear a song and I you know, try to try to pull it out, and sometimes it's there. 
if, if you can distract yourself a little bit, it's more likely to be there. But uh. So everybody out there, go, go to bradyoder.com, and uh, Brad has a really great uh, website that has uh, where he's going to be playing next. And uh, in case you just joined us, you're listening to Acoustic Songs Live. I'm your host, T. Mitchell Bell, and uh, we have Brad Yoder in the studio, and we're here in the WNJR studios um, at 91.7 FM. In beautiful Washington, Pennsylvania. Yeah, at the WNJ <laughs> College, and uh, we're streaming uh, live at WNJR.com. Org. And later, um, you'll be able to find uh, the performance of uh, Brad's uh, uh, time here at uh, if you go to acousticsongs.com, and it will direct you to our YouTube site. You can actually see the video, and uh, we'll have the podcast up there, and uh, you can listen to that. Um, Brad, tell everybody you have some shows coming up that maybe I do. You know, what do I have? Um, I have. Uh, I'm actually going to play a set uh, tomorrow night. It's not on my website yet because. This out-of-town guy asked me really last minute. Mm. But I'm going to play a set at Garfield, Art, Garfield Artworks um, in, on, on Penn Avenue in Lawrenceville, Bloomfield, uh, neighborhood of Pittsburgh. The, the show I should plug uh, for local shows that are fun to attend and free, on Tuesday, the 5th of April, I'll play from 7.30 to 9.30 um, at the Commonplace Coffee House in Squirrel Hill. Uh, the neighborhood of Pittsburgh, um, and that'll that'll be me, and I think my upright bass player is going to be there too. And that's a fun, a fun little coffee shop to play in. So, cool. Yeah, I, I that that was uh, um, cafe was a money or something that used to be. Uh, yes, a Rafa's. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. used to be a Rafa's. Um, so yeah, that's coming up. I have a house concert in the D.C. area on Saturday the 9th. And... Grazi? And, 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 and Grazi, right. I'm playing Grazi on... Uh, what am I playing, the 7th? Something like that? Yes, uh, yeah, the 7th. Yeah. The 7th is like a... There's an open mic at a, a restaurant in Wexford? Like yeah. Wexford. So there was an open mic till nine, and then uh, Judith Avers, who's a terrific songwriter and a good friend of mine, um, Judith is going to be playing uh, with me there. So, cool. so yeah, you can go, you know, go to the website to find all this. So yeah. Uh, so they, uh, we were talking about songwriting, and uh, I notice, I you know, I follow, I'm on your mailing list, and. He's, um, part of the I mean, you know, for years and it, you always put out that I'm writing this song this new song and here's the lyrics and, yeah, yeah, and, it, yeah. and it really does keep you engaged and interested in, in what you're doing you know but you're very prolific in that sense that you, you're always you know writing yeah, new I, stuff I just uh, um, you know I've typically written about a song a month over the years and sometimes sometimes more sometimes less but I was just reading a quote. Um, Jack Hardy just passed away, who was a New York City kind of songwriting legend. Um, he influenced people who are a lot more famous than he ever was, but he was a great, great writer and a great mentor of songwriters. And some, I just uh, was emailing this quote to some friends of mine, where he said basically, you know, a songwriter is a songwriter by virtue of the fact that they write songs and write songs and write songs, and, write songs and you know. Um, if you have an idea, just write it and don't um, judge it. And yeah, so I think you know, in the process of doing something a lot for a long time, you get better. And that doesn't mean uh, the specific song I might be working on or the idea may get discarded. Um, I, I, again, Jack Hardy uh, said he wrote 50 songs a year, and tossed out three fourths of them or two thirds of them. Got about twelve good ones a year. So, so yeah. I mean, I think that's that's the process is to be engaged in the thing and do it and get better at it, and enjoy it. Yeah, the, and and I guess the the interesting thing about you know like say self criticism or having that filter that um, it's hard to like say oh I think this is good or oh I think is and you almost have to bounce it off of somebody else in in, sure. in that sense yeah. like. Um, but I've noticed that that filter over time tends to disappear. Like when I was younger, I was always more critical of writing. 
that I would say, oh, well, that stinks, you know, or, or, or yeah, and yeah. it probably yeah. did. But. Yeah, yeah, but you write your way through a lot of mediocre songs on your way to a to a great one, and that's so it doesn't make sense to um, you know in the middle of something to say, well, this one isn't any good. I'm just going to toss it. Um, you know, uh, why not just finish it and see what it is? And you know, you may later later on find that there's something useful there that you use some of it. You just never know. So so like anything, you know, if you do it steadily without a lot of judgment, you'll probably improve. Yeah. And that's uh, hopefully what we're all all working on. My mine comes like when I'm driving in the car. Yeah, I sing to myself in the car too. Yeah, I have to keep something to around now to record because yeah. I I find that when I'm driving you're not really thinking about anything. It's yeah automatic and from somewhere within that brain comes this melody or words or distracted, yeah. Just something and uh, so I have I found I used to just keep a notepad and like jot it down mm -hmm. and I'm always the guy like looking down, you know, while I'm driving writing stuff. <laughs> or uh, now with all the technology that there is you can just, you know, get your cell phone memo and uh mm -hmm. ah, sing something or whatever and yeah. And then I go back and uh, I go Oh, what was I thinking? That really was dumb. I thought, you know, or I go, oh, that's that was something. Yeah. That's the start of something. Yeah, 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 yeah. It occurred to me what song I should play since we're having oh, this yeah. conversation. Oh yes, and that is this one right here. Another unrecorded song. Yes. Everybody's got a record. Okay. In this world in which we live, people have so much to give, and they like to give it to you in a song. I'm gonna stop in tune. Okay. Which is one That's of the so uh, one of the uh, hazards of playing on the radio is uh, on a show like this, which is uh, non-stop for a solid hour. Yeah. But, but I feel like the uh, intonation um, could shift, and I feel like the people out in the radio land. So while we listen to uh, Brad tune his guitar, um, I will tell you that you're listening to Acoustic Songs Live. I'm your host, T. Mitchell Bell, and. Uh, we have coming up next week on the show, uh, Il Amy from Baltimore. Uh, they played locally here mm -hmm. around the area. Yeah. And uh, the week after that, um, I have the pleasure of having my son on the radio program. Cool, that's Chris great. Chris of the Weathered Road is going to come Excellent. in. Excellent. And uh, we're going to, uh, uh, it's going to be kind of strange interviewing my own kid, but uh, it might be more like... Uh, <laughs> like you might, might want to avoid the question, so well, how was it, what was it like for you growing up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, My uh, dad was a jerk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, we can avoid uh, some of that stuff, but uh, it, it the inner I've seen him develop as a songwriter, so it's it's a uh, very cool. It's kind of yeah. That music is its own reward, and also um, you know when you're I try to talk him out of it, but you know yeah. Anyway, yeah. so here we go. Okay. In this world in which we live. People have so much to give And they'd like to give it to you in a song That they recorded in their house With backing vocals by their spouse And they think the whole world just might sing along They've been shopping it around in the record store downtown And they're hoping for a boutique label deal When they learn you write songs too They will swap CDs with you And explain their 12-point plan to keep it real Everybody's got a record that they would like to sell They'll tell you about it. There's an awful lot to tell. It was recorded in the basement. So it's high fidelity. Everybody's got a record. Welcome to musical democracy. Some guy at the airport asked me what I do. I told him I made records and I quickly added, I know you do too. He said that his wasn't out yet. But if I take a look, Everybody's got a record that they'd like to 
yourself. It's getting airplay in Poughkeepsie and Schenectady as well. It was recorded in the bathroom. If you listen close, you can hear the leak. Now, if you ain't got a record yet, you must be some kind of freak. I have a friend who made records. Yeah, he recorded sounds. He mastered microphones and outboard gear. He was the finest in this town, but now he's out of the business. And he's scanning kidneys, livers, spleens, cause one sound won't pay your bills. It's on to ultrasound to see. So I bet you that goes over well at like club cafe. Uh, it goes over well, yeah, especially yeah. like music conferences where uh -huh. you know the density of you know like folk DJs and musicians on the schmooze and so on, you know, is uh, is, is high. Then it's particularly funny. Yeah, you wouldn't believe the uh, like the submissions I get through Sonic Bits to play on the show. Yeah, like yeah. the death metal and uh, oh, just the, I mean, when you say uh, you know I have to go through like three hundred submissions in order to get twenty. You know, I mean, it's. But I, I play. Do you I mean do you play songs too, or I mean people people who want to play on the show like. Yeah, and and people uh, who want to play live. Yeah, yeah music musicians friend under it underwrote it and it became free. So all of a sudden, my submissions went from seventy five a week to you know, one hundred and twenty five a week or what you know. Wow. Like, yeah, so I'd get all these submissions and uh, maybe it's that I am just trying to, you know, give everybody. I, I I probably shouldn't listen to as many as I do, but you need, yeah, you need an intern. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny, you know, when that s story you were saying about, or, or in the song you were talking about, um, your friend now does liver scans and spleens. And yeah, stuff. he scans a. Yeah, he, I mean, that, and that's a true story. I mean, that's like the one engineer I worked with for years who needed a job with regular hours, regular income, and health insurance. So true story. We were sit I was sitting in that uh, cafe in Harrisonburg. Yeah, which, my hometown, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Uh, with my son okay. when he was about 11. Okay. And I said, you know, so what do you want to do when you grow up? You know, what do you, I said, I want to be an x ray tech. And mm -hmm. he was like, pulling my. He was joking around with me, you know. I was like, yeah. like where did that come yeah. from? Yeah, he had a set. Yeah. Well, it's a very sensible yeah. answer, you know. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do when you go? I want to be an x-ray tech, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gets deadpan straight. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, hey, I'd like to. We have like maybe time for one more. One more song. Let's yeah, yeah. Song. I mean, we're we're getting pretty close. I, w I would like to uh, ask you. Um, you had talked about uh, growing up, or or uh, as far as growing up, you you grew up in Harrisonburg, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. I have met like a lot of like your friends through uh, was it Jessica Smucker and. Heather Croft and everybody went to one school, like Goshen. <laughs> it's like yeah. I found out there was this well, it's like a, it's a Mennonite connection. There are yeah. Mennonite schools, and you know we went to some of the same high schools, even not necessarily at the same time. Um, but then you know small Mennonite liberal arts colleges. There are about three of them. There's Goshen College in Northern Indiana. There's Eastern Mennonite University in my hometown in Harrisonburg, and um, and there's some more that I'm oh there's Bluffton College, uh, Bluffton University now in Ohio. 
Okay, okay. Uh, Bethel. And so there's a, there's a, you know, if you grew up Mennonite, which is kind of like growing up, uh, you know, Amish except modern, you know, but sort of same value, cultural stuff, uh, then it's not unusual for a bunch of us to have gone to some of the same schools. Um, but a bunch of us are in Pittsburgh, in part because there's this voluntary service program that a bunch of us did when we first moved to Pittsburgh that was um, kind of connected with that. So. And there's a CD, there was like a CD of artists that, Mennonite artists? There have been a couple, too. actually. Yeah, although okay. Heather and I were on the same CD, we got like cassette tape release back in like 1990. So. Oh, wow. Um, See, I didn't know anything about any of yeah, it. Yeah. I didn't know Harrisonburg had uh, a Mennonite school. Um, my ex-wife went to JMU, and I, that's how yeah, I knew about right, it. Right. And uh, we we camp at Reddish Knob, which is very Reddish outside. Knob. I've hiked Reddish Knob. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we have all these like very very fun. random connections. This is fun, though. And thanks so much for having me down. Man. Just, I, I've I've connection. enjoyed it. It's been yeah. the, I'd say the highlight of uh, the last year that we're. We're one year old this month, uh, coming up Acoustic in April. AcousticSongs.com. Uh, well, the, this show on WN, yeah, WNGR, yeah. but yeah, AcousticSongs.com, that uh, it has had a couple of incarnations over the years. Uh, I was trying to do something with it, but um, luckily they, uh, they, they were asking me, hey, would you like to host a radio show? I said, you're reading my bucket list, you know? Well, yeah, that's great. Yeah, so it's, it's been great having you. And, uh, Come back again. Um, sure. The next CD is coming out, and uh, what do you want to leave leave us with? Well, you know, um, I've got we've got like five minutes, right? I can do a whole yeah yeah a whole song thing. Uh huh. Um, let me see. What is really good here? Uh, I could do anything. Anything. I know, right? Um, let's do. I'll do another song from the new from the new record. This is from Excellent Trouble, yeah. where you can find on your excellent website at uh, bradyoder.com and uh, pick it up. I, I'm looking forward to hearing the whole What are you going to play for us? This is a song called Love Is All I Have For You and one of my favorites of mine. If I'm allowed to have you know favorite songs of mine. is all I have for you It will have to do If you were looking for a miracle The fact that we're still here Well, that's miraculous as anything That I've seen magicians pull But I forgot the tricks I knew is all I have for you Love is all I have for you Love is all that's left after the wind has blown the chaff away I laugh at what I tried to save and disappointment's just a lens to magnify what might have been but none of that was ever true love is all I have for you I close my eyes I'm a child by the water casting stones so circles spread Then blink twice And we're old on a park bench Watching birds eat scattered bread In between we lost track of time kind enough to remind us the little space between goodbyes is really only pocket sized I carry you around with me 
In case I need some sympathy This fear that we're not good enough Will disappear when morning comes Cause none of that was ever true Love is all I have for you Miraculous as anything I've ever seen magicians do But I forgot the tricks I knew Love is all I have